Okay, this lesson is on simplifying rational expressions. So the learning goal is actually to simplify rational expressions in order to discover information more easily. And what we're going to see today is, is something, something key. Um, and uh, it, it actually doesn't really culminate until grade 12 where we're actually deciding what the shapes of these graphs look like. But the idea of simplifying these rational expressions will help us to, to determine the shape. Um, we've seen a little bit about of that already in the in the uh, reciprocal graph in the first unit. Uh, so today, uh, in this lesson, we're going to focus on factoring and reducing rational expressions. And basically, what we're doing is um, is like reducing fractions. And then uh, we're also going to make restrictions on the variable. Uh, so the question to start is: Are are these equivalent? And so if you think about it, you can probably start to see that well, if you'd actually divided this term by this and this term by this, just like um, just like kind of reverse adding with a common denominator, you actually do get this. Um, however, when you start to play around and, and, and graph these things, if you make a table of values, you actually see that like when x is every, when x is anything else, you get the same thing as for f as in for g, except for when x is zero. The problem is when x is zero, uh, the the f value, the function is for f is actually undefined. Uh, so these are not equivalent. If you sub in the same thing, you should be able to get the same thing out. But if they're not, if you're not, if it doesn't work in all cases, then they're not equivalent. And it doesn't work when x is zero. Uh, so that makes them not equivalent. They're gonna look very similar, but um, there's that one restriction that x cannot equal zero. So rational numbers are really just like a fraction. So it's just like two integers, um, two whole numbers like written one over the other. Um, and then if you think of rational numbers as like, well, if one was the denominator, then technically all numbers are, all integers are rational numbers. And that's true. Uh, rational expressions are similar, but like um, only if they have a variable in the denominator. Uh, if it's just a one in the denominator, we don't call it a rational expression. A variable in the denominator makes a lot of things interesting about functions. Um, so starting off, like looking at the variables, if we sum in x is 2, we can evaluate each of these. And we can get a number. Um, so for the first one, we get 1 half. Uh, for the second one, we get 0 over negative 3, which is just 0. You're allowed to have 0 in the numerator. But the third one, something happens. You actually get 10 divided by 0, and that is impossible. You can't do that. And so it starts kind of like looking at these rational expressions and saying, okay, what's the issue here? What, what do we have to watch out for? And the big thing is that there's some points that make the rational expression undefined. Um, so looking at these questions, like what makes them undefined? Uh, you can look at the first one and say like, well, what, what values will make um, the denominator zero? And so you can see the first one, you've got b equals negative 2, so b can't be negative 2. Um, the second one, you look at it and you're like, okay, well, what, what can a not be? Like, how, how is a squared plus 1 um, equal to 0? And then you realize that there's actually nothing that makes this thing equal to 0, so there's no restrictions on a. Um, and the last one is actually trickier, so you can pause the video and try to find it yourself. And this is like kind of the need to, to write it in a different way, write it in an equivalent, different, simplified way. Um, because it's harder to actually find them. Um, I challenge you to find both of them, but, um, but you'll, you'll have a dif difficulty finding them. Uh, if you rewrite x squared plus 9x plus 18 in this way, now you can figure out what they are. Can you see how x can equal negative 6? Can you see how x cannot equal negative 3? If you subbed it in up here, do you see that that would make the denominator zero? Do you see if one of these factors was zero, then the whole thing would be zero? Uh, so x cannot equal negative six or negative three. You might got a, might have gotten one of those, but it's really tricky to get them both without actually factoring it. How do we simplify rational expressions? And so we're, we're actually going to keep coming back to this. Like whatever we do with numbers, we can also do with expressions. Um, same rules apply. And so what we do is we just reduce them. And so if we factor this to 3 times 24 and 2 times 24, we're allowed to divide up the 24s and we would be equivalent. We get 3 over 2. So that's what basically we're doing is we're factoring the top and factoring the bottom so that we get something that we can simplify. 
So this one here, um, you can try these on your own. And so if we factor the tops and the bottoms, uh, you, you notice with the three questions, you can factor this one, factor this one. Uh, these guys, you can just reduce them, but it, we, we'll show you how to factor that and then factor these two. So if you want to pause it and try that, that's great. Um, okay, the numerator it actually factors to two brackets, um, and so it has to be 2x and x. Um, oh, before that, we can actually take out that 2. It's, a, it's, a, it's easier than a, uh, than a complex trinomial because there's a common factor of 2 that can come out of all three. Um, and so we can rewrite it as 2x squared minus 3x and minus 18. And the bottom, we can take out the 2 as well. And that enables us to actually cancel out the 2s. Uh, the numerator, we can factor to x minus 6 and x plus 3. And that now allows you to actually take out the x minus 6s as well, because they divide out. And so you're left with an answer of x plus 3. That's kind of neat because this complicated thing actually just simplifies to something we actually know the shape of. It's just a line in the form y equals mx plus b um, with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3. However, you do have those restrictions. x cannot equal anything that makes the denominator 0, not the numerator, just the denominator. A common mistake here is people will say x cannot equal negative 3, but that's no, not a problem. Uh, the, the numerator can be 0, the denominator can't, and x can't equal 6. The next one, you can just reduce it. You can say, well, what? how does 12 and 15 really reduce as a fraction? And then how does x squared over x reduce as a fraction? Uh, if you want to write it like this, you can. So you can see like the factored form, and so the 3s cancel and the x's cancel. Um, and you're left with 4x on the top and just 5 on the bottom. Um, but to be equal here, so for us to say equal, we do need to include that restriction. Um, so you also have that restriction that x cannot equal 0, because the denominator would be 0 at the, in the beginning if x equals 0. And the last one here, uh, we can factor the numerator. So we've got two brackets, x and x, and uh, minus 6 and plus 1. And the bottom is a difference of squares, x minus 6 and x plus 6. Cross out the x minus 6's, we're left with x plus 1 over x plus 6. And so then you've got the, the restrictions where, and if you look at the fully factored form, you can state your restrictions from there. x cannot equal 6 here, because that would make a 0 here. Or negative 6, because that would make a 0 here. And 0 times anything will give you 0. And so negative 6 and positive 6 make, will, will make the denominator equal 0. Uh, the next one, you can factor out a 2x, left with x minus 5. You can reduce the x's, and you're left with 2x minus 5 over 3. Um, and then you've got the restriction that x cannot equal 0. Because if it's 0, you'd have 3 times 0, and you can't have the denominator being 0. And the last one, they actually it actually really looks similar, x minus 2 and 2 minus x. And so whenever you see this, uh, you can actually like rearrange it. The bottom so it so it looks like this and whenever you have a like a negative leading off um, my recommendation is always to factor it out and so if we take out the negative um, we can rewrite the denominator as x minus 2 and then you can cancel the x minus 2 and the x minus 2 the question is what's left if everything's gone what's left if you had 4 over 4 what's left it's the same question 4 over negative 4 what's the answer and in that case, it's 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. Now, you still have the restriction that x cannot equal something to give the denominator 0. And you can see that right at the beginning or right here, x cannot equal 2. Uh, it's not quite negative 1. It's negative 1, but x cannot equal 2. <laughs> Why is the restriction necessary? Um, it's not this. If you graph this, you're gonna, it's going to look like the horizontal line. Um, y equals negative 1, but it still has that restriction. Like if you look at the table of values, that x cannot equal 2. So without saying this, this, this thing is technically not equal to negative 1. Not quite. You still have to say like x cannot equal 2. You're basically setting a domain with the, with the graph, with the, um, the function. Uh, here's a common mistake. Um, so we've got negative 2 on the top and the bottom. And we just cross them out. Um, 
that you can't you can't actually do that. So we call it like illegal canceling. Um, you can't just like if you tried it with numbers like five minus one over four minus one, you couldn't just cancel the ones out. Um, you, if you can't do it with numbers, you can't do it with algebra. Um, and we actually know it's wrong because if you took a number and subbed it into the top, so like like three, you'd actually get seven on the top. In the bottom, if you subbed in three, you just get three. F of three would equal three because f of x equals x, and that's not the same. So like you can't actually do that. And there's some practice.